Collins took, he was destined to his own fate. His own day of reckoning with himself. The idea is that destiny is the very real, concrete thing that every person has to deal with. How does Samuel's view of fate differ from that of Go watch TV. It's just Tommy.
Welcome, Mrs. Whitlock. It's lovely, Eric. You look disappointed for a moment. It is not. It's really lovely. Oh, look! Right? Is that a bedroom? Yes, it is. Gonna be ours? It'll need some fixing first. It was her room, was it? Yes. Come on along, I'll show you the rest of the house. Forbidding now, I suppose, empty like this. But it was usually this way. Shortly after Marion and I were married, she removed all the furniture her parents had left her. This is our home, she used to say. And we must choose everything carefully. Well, we didn't get very far before she died. But now that you're here, it's going to be lovely again. I'll get the things out of storage tomorrow. We're all town at the warehouse. Take care of that, too. You have candles? Sure. It'll be twice as romantic. Speaking of being romantic. I got to carry you over the threshold. That's where Mickey keeps his gardening things. Who's Mickey? The gardener. He's kept it up the two years I've been away. All by himself? That's right. He must work awfully hard. Oh, he and Marion would spend hours on end working here in the gardens. And up in the greenhouse back there. See, he loved her very much. Sometimes I used to wonder who she was. My wife or Mickey's nursemaid. You know, I don't think he quite believes she's gone. I think he expects her to show up one of these mornings and scold her for neglecting the gardens. You still love her, don't you? No, I'm not jealous. I'm grateful to her. I think to have loved once, really loved, to learn how to love always. Learning it from her, you give again to me. I wish there was some way to think. Who's that? I don't know. They're driving around the back. Come on. Come along. Eric! I see Eric. <laughs> Please stop by to meet your new wife. Oh, Eric, this is a wonderful surprise. It's been a long time. It has. Reverend. Good to see you, Eric. Jenny, this is Mrs. Snow. I'm very happy to meet you. Jenny, this is a lovely surprise. And the Reverend Mr. Snow. Hello, my dear. Oh, she's sweet, Eric. I know. I happen to be going into town. I ran into Mr. Maurer. He told me you were getting back today. And we thought we'd just drop by and bring you something for your dinner. Oh, nice. Well, it'll save you all the bother of shopping while you're trying to get settled. Well, then why don't you stay for dinner? Oh, no, not tonight. Oh, no, no, we wouldn't think of that. Oh, now, please say yes. I'd like for you to. It would be like old times. All right, on the condition that I do the cooking. You don't have to. You know, I know that, but I'd love to. Well, there's Mickey. Excuse me, honey. Mickey! Poor Mickey. He keeps this place up like a shrine. 
Eric told me how he loved Marion. Mickey's father was a gardener here when Marion's mother was alive. Mickey and Marion grew up together here. Jenny, this is Mickey. How do you do, Mickey? I hope we'll be good friends. Well, Mickey. Thank you, Mickey. Well, shall we all go inside? That's a good idea. Mickey, remember you promised me some of those rose cuttings. Nice seeing you again, Mickey. I'm going to have to get you down to the barber shop one day very soon. Excuse us, Mickey. Isn't she wonderful? Yes, she's not at all like Marion, and I think that's for the best. You know, so many men, when they lose a wife, they try so hard to deny the loss they marry someone exactly like the first wife. It hardly seems fair using the living to bring back the dead, does it? No, I suppose it doesn't. We make a prison for ourselves out of the past, at least our sentimental wished-for pasts. Mrs. Snow. Yes, dear. There's something I must tell you and the Reverend. Well, of course, Eric. What is it? You see, Jenny has not had a very happy past. Oh? And talking about it or about something that might strongly remind her of it, she's very impressionable. Is there something wrong, Eric? No, not really. You see, she lost her parents many years ago in a very tragic way. And talking about unhappy pasts only... She's very impressionable. See, I want her to be happy, Mrs. Snow. Of course you do, and so do we all. Now, how did she lose them? Well, look, I'm not prying, dear. It's just that Mr. Snow and I can help better if we know something about it. They drowned in an accident. Jenny saw it all. Who is Mr. Maurer? Mr. Maurer? Why, oh, he's a lawyer in town. I thought no one knew we were coming. You said you heard from Mr. Maurer? Well, Eric wrote him. He takes care of the estate or what's left of it. Oh, that's right. Eric has to see him tomorrow. Well, Eric's co-executor of the estate, along with Mr. Maurer. You see, Marion's death was so sudden that, well, all that was left to Eric was the house and these grounds. Mr. Maurer told me that Eric had found someone very sweet and very kind, and with whom he was very much in love. He didn't say enough. How did Marion die? Didn't Eric tell you? I think the subject's rather painful to him. I would like to make him talk about it. Would you mind telling me? I'd like to know. It was a rainy day. She and Mickey had been working up there in the greenhouse. She left him to go back to the house for a few minutes. The way we pieced it together after the accident is that while she was coming down this path, apparently it began to rain very hard. She must have run along here. We don't know, of course, what happened then. 
Perhaps she slipped on a leaf. Base of her skull was smashed. It was thought that she hit her head on the edge of the cement wall where we're sitting. And she fell in there. She died in the water. That's where Eric found her ten minutes later. day after tomorrow. We'll do better than that. We'll come to church on Sunday as well. Oh, getting back to church is like moving a mountain. He'll come. Come along, my dear. It's getting late. Eric, thank you very much for bringing Jenny into our lives. Thank you for the dinner. It was a pleasure. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Edward, did you know that Jenny's very wealthy? Oh, yes. Mr. Ma told me in town today. Well, she's not at all like Marion, you know? She's so gentle and timid, as if... as if she were afraid of something. I knew you'd like my friends, dear. What's this? Huh? Just happy, that's all. Oh, come. So happy. Come on. beast in the jungle. It's all about a man who waited all of his life for something great, wonderful to happen to him. He had only one good friend. It's a woman whom he confided. And she died. At her grave, he suddenly realized that she was the great and wonderful thing that he'd waited for all of his life. But it was too late then. His memories, like beast in the jungle, rise up out of the past, overwhelm him. Oh, poor fellow. He doesn't know what he missed.
don't think Mickey looks for her in the pond. Jenny, now stop it. I can't help it, Harry. Let bad feelings come back. I've forbidden you to talk about it. She looked like that, Eric. My mother looked like that. Jenny, Jenny. I can't help it, Eric. Darling, you're just talking yourself into those same old fears. I've got to talk about it, Eric. I have to talk about I it. I forbid you to talk about it now. What? Just that with you beside me, I'm alive again. I don't want to be sick anymore. Honey, look. Now, you mustn't go on thinking like this. Besides, how could a very poorly done self-portrait upset you so much? I know it's only my own fear. It's my own guilt that I can't get away from. Eric, I'm sorry. Oh, I want you to listen to me. And I want you to believe me. Now, you were sick once, yes, but you were cured. Mickey caused this. You may as well know. He does look for Marion night after night down by that pond. And he probably comes here afterwards. I'm going to speak to Mickey in the morning. Now, don't you see? How simply it's all explained away. But if I also heard a scream, Eric, before when I went to the hospital, I was hearing things. I'm hearing them again. What did you hear? It was a high, strange scream. High, strange scream. Like a peacock's cry? What's that sound like? Come here. Sound like that? You see? It's all very, very real. Such a fool. You feeling better now? Yes. be bothered with any of Mickey's nightly visits anymore. I've forbidden him to come into the house. Oh, I was just nervous last night. I wish you wouldn't take it out on Mickey. No, he's a child. He must be disciplined. I'd like him to feel I'm his friend. Why don't you do some gardening with him while I'm in town? If he sees you're interested, you win him over quickly enough. Wait a minute. He lists staples mostly. Oh. Are you sure you don't want to come in with me? You get more done without me. Got to see about the lights, the phone, the bank, and the warehouse people about that furniture. You know that cop's just about broken my back. Uh, don't forget to see Mr. Mauer. I have to see him this evening. It's a bore, but I'll have to see him. Will you be home in time for dinner? I'll wait for you. No, if I'm not, don't you worry, darling. Getting out of Mauer's clutches sometimes requires an act of God. I love you. Hello, Mickey. Look out. You almost cut him. He's a handsome one, isn't he? So cuddly and warm. When I was a little girl, I used to want to be a caterpillar. So I was a very little girl. There you go. Marion must have loved her gardens. We'll keep them lovely for her always. You know what I'd like to do, Mickey? 
I'd like to pick some of the nicest flowers and take them to her. Would you like that? Yes. Eric told me she was near here. Would you show me where? I'm sure it was a great loss to all of you, Mickey. She cries. Cries? In the night. Dead people don't cry, Mickey. I heard her. Heard her? I expect she's gone. She cries. She cries in the night. I think he expects her to show up one of these mornings. She died in the water. The base of her skull was smashed.
doing it if I really wanted to, I would just say. admitting she was sick again.
up, Jenny. Come on, Jenny.